We've still loads to come on Network 2's Random Access Music Weekend, including... The Cranberries. Whipping Boy. A profile of Phil in it. The Pogues. Ash. E17. And many more, so don't go away. Now, Enya talks about our music and inspiration. The bash for Enya, I don't know about the bash that I wasn't at it, but I did get the invitation. Right down at the invitation to this reception was one of the most sophisticated, expensive, airbrushed looking things I've ever seen. I've actually uh, kept a diary um, since I think it was 1987. I had one actually at boarding school um, for the five years I, would, I was at boarding school. But by 87, um, I've kept a diary, and uh, it's, it's something that uh, I don't know why one keeps a diary, but once you get into the habit of writing in a diary, it's, it's really hard to break that habit. And um, it makes for good reading on a very wet, cold, windy day to go back and, and when you think, what was I doing five years today? You read back, and it's, it's amazing because it takes you back to that day, and you relive that day. It's incredible. My horoscope is uh, Taurus. Um, once I had my fortune told, it was um, a palmologist, and it was actually a nun. And um, I was reluctant for her to read my, my palm, but uh, I think I was coaxed into it eventually. And, uh, um, years later, a few things that she has said have actually um, been true. I'm quite surprised, and I've forgotten some of it, but uh, um, it's just uh, she had said a few things and I'd forgotten it, and in later years, it's, I've remembered them as they've been happening. So um, for me to, to be successful, but to work on something that I enjoy, it's extremely rewarding. So I really like to let me back make comment. What had happened was um, uh, just a call, and somebody mentioned, you know, that on the Fuji's album there was Bodicea had been sampled, um, and at first, when you know, it's you're dis you, you really are sort of in disbelief because you, you don't believe that they would do it uh, so openly. Um, but when I heard the album and I did hear Bodicea, I was quite disappointed because they had. Um, sampled quite a few um, songs and had credited the various people and I'd asked and seeked permission but had not with me. So uh, immediately the record company and the publishers just went to their record company and said we're going to pull the song which entailed pulling the album and um, at this stage their manager had spoken to, uh, to me and had said, I was kind of a bit worried because of uh, the association with rap artists and uh, some of them get this um, sticker um, label for sort of bad language and contents of lyrics and I was a little bit concerned about this um, for my fans because they would have felt that I had consented to this but then the manager David Sonberg uh, came and spoke and said that they were not of rap but of hip-hop and that they were uh, trying to portray a different image and trying to uh, say something that was quite different. So I listened and then in the end I got very concerned for the group because they had a number one album in the US uh, charts and uh, I thought it would be terrible that they'd have to pull the album out of the charts, out of the shops. So, um, so I said the song would stay in the album, and but they had to um, put in an, an apology with their their record. 
it has to be that um, that people just can't go and take music from somebody without permission. I was not actually at um, the Grammy Awards um, for the first one for Shepherd Moons or for um, Memory of Trees because um, it was a case of being in the studio being the priority and uh, not believing that I was going to receive a Grammy. So um, it was a wonderful, um, wonderful news to receive, but I didn't actually make any acceptance speech. Well, the Grammy was a, a wonderful achievement, um, but with me, when I work in the studio, I tend to try to forget about the sales, the success, and concentrate solely on the music. I believe it's very important to put that very much firstly for me. I'm very aware of what's happening, especially now, because uh, you get aware of what's happening chart-wise. And But for me, um, when it's a great melody, no matter what form of um, music it is, if it's rock, pop, classical, I, I think you know you, you are immediately drawn to it. I think on, on seeing um, their interviews, I almost admire their energy. That really comes across, uh, how much they're enjoying it. And um, maybe it's because there are five of them, they can pass on whatever problems might uh, entail by the huge success they have. But they're just always there, being so bubbly. Well, at the beginning, I went back to uh, study classical music again. And uh, through that, I began to compose music. And um, again, at that time, we didn't really know what it entailed, the three of us working together. But uh, what evolved from uh, my writing was that Roma thought the music was instrumental music I wrote firstly. And she thought it was very theme-like. Um, would suit visuals very much. So she um, got in touch with uh, a few film directors and film producers, and hence we got working with David Putnam uh, on a project, a film called The Frog Prince. And um, so that was really the first uh, uh, work we had done as a, the, the, the three of us. Well, at the beginning of a project, what, whatever I've been working on, um, I would write the music um, on my own first. And then, um, again, that could take, uh, we're talking about maybe weeks, months. Um, and then when I f finally feel I've, you know, find a melody um, that I'm happy with, then I'll play the melody to Nikki and to Roma. And then we get involved in uh, arranging it, and the lyrics are written, and um, because there's only three of us involved together, I feel there are like disadvantages and advantages. And the disadvantages, um, you know, when you work so closely uh, to the music, it's very difficult to know if you're happy with what you're working on. So therefore, it's important to have time to leave the music when you can and then come back and be a listener for a little while. Um, and, you know, that's important because sometimes you get carried away with an arrangement which is absolutely beautiful, but nothing to do with the melody or the sentiment of the melody whatsoever. So, therefore, that's why um, an Enya album takes time. Talk about Enya, when they talk about New Age music, they'd always use words like ethereal and haunting and, 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 and evoking the past and pastoral and, you know, a, a soundscape as opposed to just a noise or whatever, you know. So when you take all these things into account, that sounds pretty New Age to me. I know there are three or four uh, um, magazines in the States that are just supposedly New Age music. Even there, there isn't one person who ever admits to being New Age. But we know what it means and we know what they are. And it goes right down to the whole image, the image which takes itself in the videos, which are just brilliant. They are those soundscapes, paintscapes or whatever. With the first solo album, what had happened really was that the music actually sold by itself. It wasn't necessary um, for people to know who I was and that's the reason that I'm able to retain such a private lifestyle because uh, when there's an album released 
um, I'll do a certain amount of work and then I feel that's it, you know, because uh, the, the music has done the work by itself really and I, I have this choice of either um, spending sort of a full year um, doing interviews or not, which is, is really good. The, the influence is there from Irish traditional music, uh, from church music and from classical music. They would be, for me, the main influences. Um, for Nicky, they're totally different. They would be more Phil Spector and the Beatles, the Beach Boys. Um, but I find that there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of themes which uh, involve mythology. Um, because I was brought up, um, my grandfather relating a lot of stories about Irish mythology. And Roma has a great love of mythology, Greek mythology. And that's something that um, is used quite a bit in the themes with the songs. Well, the ideas really are derived from the songs and the lyrics. And then uh, we see the so storyboard. And I'm very concerned about how I'm portrayed. And there's certain things that I won't do. And, um, and I get involved in really um, how I'm seen within the video and I feel it has to relate to me very much so but it also has to um, relate to the music so it's uh, try to incorporate both of those. Well it's, it's basically a video based on um, the song itself it's very much a positive um, song um, dealing with how it's wonderful to be brave enough and to go and follow your dream and try to achieve um, whatever you want and um, the video itself um, had a wonderful feeling of uh, how um, I was able to guide certain people within the video and how they were trying to uh, achieve something and that um, just by believing in it, it, it that's really what you need to achieve what you want um, but um, I had shot the video in in a beautiful house meant more has uh, on location and uh, it was quite enjoyable. A different director this time, uh, Dan Nathan was his name. And at one stage, uh, something I've never done before, he actually um, did um, a scene where he reenacted the whole video for the three and a half minutes, uh, which I've never done because usually it's section by section and sometimes you do the last scene first. And, but it was, it was, for me, first of all, I, I thought, um, is this possible, you know, to, it wasn't going to be the full take of it, but he wanted to be able to edit into a full version. And uh, it was very enjoyable to do, to react the whole video in one take. So it was quite interesting. I think I'm quite spiritual, uh, into the spiritual side of religion. Um, being brought up as a Catholic, it's very difficult to forget. Um, the upbringing, um, but I do find um, I'm drawn to um, to going into a church and sitting there. Um, it's a very, very peaceful place to be. It's very calm and very therapeutic. I thought it might have been the fact that uh, I actually wanted to teach music, um, but um, because of once I finished with uh, Father Callan, I ended up joining with Clannad. So uh, what began uh, with what I thought was a regret actually ended up not being. Unrivaled, unequaled, unique. Paint the sky with stars, the best Avenia.